Okay, so I think we got through um, question one, question 11. At least these problems are, you don't have to do a whole lot of extra calculation. So the final is similar two. to these, right? The final is going to be just, yeah, yeah, yeah. These, okay, true or false, those are good, those are good. So yes. So you should be able to go back to some of your spreadsheets and just right. pop in some some new numbers. Yeah, so most most the, the ones we're doing right now are the hardest ones. Pretty sure. Haven't looked at this one yet, but let's take a look. So this is problem twelve. So, um, when you guys are doing your giant energy project, you can now brag to your colleagues, I'm really good at Excel. <laughs> it's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. You, 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 you sit there with you know, the marketing guys and the, the hands-on guys and the tech guys, and if you can, and I, I'll guarantee you, the banker is not going to know how to put kilowatt hours into the spreadsheet. And very few, I shouldn't say, very few bankers are going to be able to do that. And, um, and most, most engineers are, are also not going to want to be dinking around with this kind of stuff. They're going to be out, you know, surveying and drawing. So I, I think this is a really valuable thing to have. If, if, you, can, if you can make the boots on the ground decisions, you know, for the CEO, the boss, whoever, you know, and have these tools in your spot, it's, it's so valuable. Um, I was like, you know, and even, even yesterday in this big meeting, we are trying to figure out, um, you know, if we get the bid, how the, the money is distributed to the different entities. Because each one of us have, a, have certain financial demand, like in order for each, per, each part to work, just like we just did here. Like the, the money has to sort of flow out into the system, into the different partners. And the question is, uh, do, the, do the partners, you know, what portion of that cash flow actually is rolled into each partner's company equity and how much has to flow back into the, into the corporation that's being formed? Because the money's flowing all the time. You know, some of it flows into time, or, or sorry, into, um, well, yeah, just time, you know, salary. Some of it flows into equipment. Some of it flows into legal. Some of it flows into insurance. And, you know, keeping tra track of these uh, dollar flows is um, it's, it's the game. Okay. okay. Well, so it pump with a variable frequency drive as the following attributes. Um, <coughs> it's running at... Um, so full load flow is 1,000 gallons per minute. Full load pressure is 175 feet of pressure. The minimum is 175 feet. So once it's there, you got to shut it off. Um, when the minimum pressure is reached, what is the... What's W mean on that, W horse? Water. Water, water horsepower, right, thanks. Horsepower. What is the water horsepower output of the pump? <clears throat> yeah, I remember this guy.
Was that week so I just looked at? after that. Pumped hydro. Okay, so pressure, we got that in PSI. going to take this this little chunk right here Here's our P, so if we're given, given it in PSI, uh, PS, yeah. so there's a relationship between PSI and feet to get um, water horsepower, mm -hmm. to get water horsepower. We're, we're multiplying the, um, the, the, the feet times the gallons per minute. And what's, what's one again? Um, Was that the um, specific gravity? One's a specific gravity. Okay, that's just water divided by 39.69. I remember deriving that. Okay, so we only all we really need is the feet and the GPM to get the uh, WHP. So initially, um, we're running at 1,000. And the fluid pressure is 175. So, I don't think we need this at all. Let's just double check. Let's, re let's review our other spreadsheet. So, the um, water horsepower is the head and feet times the gallons per minute times the specific gravity divided by 3960. So, in this case, uh, 138 times 3000 is 105. In this case, um, 175 times 1,000 is, is 44. I don't see how I could have made a mistake there. Okay. Um, following attributes. So when the minimum pressure is reached, so this thing should still, I mean, I'm assuming we're just going to keep pumping away at 1,000 gallons per minute. 
I don't see why you wouldn't. I mean, I think I think the the flow is going to be the same. Why would the why would the flow, I'm just wondering how many variables are changing here. It just doesn't seem that. Okay, so now we had one of our homeworks was similar. Does the variable frequency drive change something? Uh, no, it was as the the depth changed, the the gallons per minute changes. Really. I remember that. Which homework was that? Let me try again. That was uh, uh, unit eight. Let me look. This one? I guess that's what I had open already. Problem four on unit eight. Let me check it out. Okay, fine, fine, fine. Yeah. Didn't say anything about friction. I don't see any. Um, I don't see any relationship between flow and head here. Uh, go down to question four. Okay. Problem four. No, oh, yeah, I haven't done. I haven't graded this one yet. Maybe because it's giving you different. Yeah, I think it's just saying that. Um, because your Prius has a has a given amount of power, um, and so the um, the deeper you go, uh, yeah, your I think your power is consistent. Right. So the deeper you go, the lower the flow. I, got you, yeah. I think that's it. Okay. Okay. Um, let's go back to the problem. the information we're going to get here. The, the flow is going to stay the same. Um, so the head is now um, 77. The flow is still 1,000. Let's just copy. Okay. 
paste. Greater than 15. Unless I'm missing something, I, I, I think it's, um, I think it's 19. What did I get? <laughs> I'm going to change that so it says greater than 15. He's got 13 here. I, I think it's I think there's an affinity law going on that I don't that I don't I'm not seeing here. Yeah, let's 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 use the affinity law. I think we got the other two correct. We missed that one. Um, somewhere to quick break okay we're back um, I, I got the wrong answer initially because I think I just sort of jumped the gun a little bit so what I'm doing here I'm going back to the affinity laws I know these are covered a little bit so Let's just review the, the affinity laws for a second. Um, I, I think I can I think I can draw this out a little bit too. Um, okay, so here's here's your um, here's the pipe. Um, Q is the is the flow of fluid, and it's and Q the the, the um, dimensions of Q are gallons per minute. Um, you know, and so somewhere in here, I'm just going to go and draw it like this. Somewhere in here, you've got your pump, and it is spinning at some rate n. The dimensions of n equals RPM. The only thing this equation says is Q1 over Q2 equals N1 over N2. It just means that if N goes up, Q goes up by a proportional amount. The faster the thing spins, the, the, more, the faster the pumping happens. Pretty straightforward. The next one says that if the um, if if I um, double my spin rate, 
my pressure only goes up by, um, my pressure doesn't go up double. It just, it just goes up by the square root. Right? Um, well, 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 we'll see that soon enough. And then it basically says that um, the ratio, the, the, the ratio of the powers goes by the cube of the spin rate. So what we're trying to do now is figure out when the <clears throat> um, pressure changes, what does that do to the spin rate? Once we know the ratio of the spin rates, we can go back and get the power. So we, get the, we have to use both of these equations. So that's where we are right now. I just copied that little GIF on the, on the um, power law, or the affinity laws. H1 is our initial head, we got that at 175. Q1 is our initial flow, we got that at 1,000. We know that eventually we're going to get down to a minimum pressure of 77. The question is, um, what's Q? Well, we know, so what I've done here is um, said that um, N1 squared over N2 squared just equals H1, which is in cell E10, divided by H10, which is in cell yeah, H10. So that's the square, and then I, just, I find what N1 over N2 is. That's, that's the square root of it. Um, now what I want is copy, paste, three. I want N1 over N2 cubed just equals that times that, times that. Number. So this is also um, So, N, I'm just kind of being a little redundant here, but N1 over N2 cubed is the same as P1 over P2 equals dink, dink, dink. Okay. Now, what we're looking for is P2. equals um, P2, uh, let me write it out, um, P1 equals P2 times N1 over N2 cubed. For uh, P2 equals P1 over N1 over N2 cubed. So P2 equals P1 divided by that factor. Oh my God. There it is, 13, bam. Okay, so just to review, yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> so just to review, we, we had to use the affinity laws, and I just, I just kind of jumped to the conclusion that the uh, flow rate was going to stay the same, which it, it's not necessarily, that didn't, even, that didn't even come into the equation. What, what we're looking at is the fact that um, when the when the pressure let's see when the pressure goes down n one over 
equation to, let's just write out h1 over h2. Get this whole thing straight here. h1 over h2 equals h1 over h2, 2.7. Yeah. Okay, so in fact, um, I'm just verifying that we use the affinity law correctly. So h1 over h2 is the same as n1 over n2 squared. So to boost the pressure, you don't have to boost the um, the speed as, as much. So boosting the speed by boosting the, doubling the, the speed quadruples the head. Double doubling the speed octuples the power because of the viscosity and the pressure. Okay. So really all we did there was use these two affinity laws, the relationship between head and spin rate and pressure, or sorry, power and spin rate together to get 13. Woo! Dodi, I hope that helped. Everybody else, get it right. Yeah, you know, I, I'm just curious, and I know we're at 6 o'clock here, so I don't have time to dig too much deeper into the rest of those guys, but um, let's just say uh, con, I'll, I'll look a little bit at 12, I'm not going to solve them. They might be out there. There might be a good one. I just want, I'm, I want to double check. It's got this, like everything is out there now. Some real time. This guy might have it. Let's see. Let's see what. Um, let's got a beard. He's got a couple of gray hairs. It's a very specific moment, the launch window. We have to be very precise. Timing is... The affinity laws for a specific pump, the volume is proportional to speed. But we're, but not we're not actually, actually looking, looking at, at the rotational, rotational speed, we're, we're looking, looking at the peripheral, peripheral speed of the impeller. The, the head is proportional to that speed squared, and the power absorbed is proportional to that speed cubed. The implication for any specific pump is that even a small change in speed can give quite significant changes to these parameters, and especially to the power. And if and we if look, we look at, at a particular, a particular manufacturer's, manufacturer's set of curves for a pump, pump. these are plotted, plotted first of all with the impeller diameter, diameter reducing. This is, this is described as a cut impeller, impeller. And, and the <coughs> important point to see here is that, that the flow head, head volume, volume curves, curves all decline, but, but the efficiency curves actually tend to reduce as the impeller cut increases. So this is being shown in this case by the efficiency iso efficiency lines. If we go to a variable speed solution, and this is actually the same pump, just plotted with variable speed, 
can see, see that, that the actual, actual efficiency, efficiency curves, curves have changed shape. shape. The, the pump, pump can, can always, always run, run in best efficiency. efficiency. And, if and if we, we overlay, overlay a system, system curve, curve here, here we can, we can see, see the system, system curve and the best efficiency line are running, are running very, very close, close to each other on a system, system where there is a low static. static. When, we, when go we go to a system where there's, there's a higher static, static head, head, in that, in that case, case, the amount of speed turned down is not so great, and, and we, are we are running beyond, beyond the particular, particular efficiency, efficiency lines, lines so, so the, the system efficiency is dropping. Yeah, well, he just showed the three affinity laws, but it's, um, anyway, ho hopefully I went through the actual algebra to get to get us there. Okay, um, let's just do, let's just, Sean had one other little, um, one other little question, so we said, discussion, it was, it was with the t week 12 homework. Okay, let's take a look. <laughs> the Excel addict. Whoa. Two articles and resources, okay. Did we just do last week's quiz or the one before? I think we, I think we did, okay. Yeah. Review the missed questions. Check. <laughs> Same format. Um, when interviewing, want to answer with a non-fiction story or so. Okay, um, review and comment from uh, assignment 12. Um, that's it. So fix, fix the last week's quiz. I think what you would, I think, uh, let, me, let me show you this. Well, I want you to prepare a story to answer using materials from class. You select the topic of your response, something from the reading material, student resource, energy storage, how the electric system works, developing spreadsheets, water horsepower. Yeah. Um, here, so here's what I want to, here's what I would like you to do in this. Um, and I'll, I'll tell my own little story from this last weekend. Um, I had the opportunity to go to Bozeman for the NASA launch student symposium. So students were um, able to show some of the research. Shauna gave hers on the rocket stove so far. Shelly Mitchell gave hers on her e-waste um, products. And I can even tell it myself. I, I think the last couple of years, and even since, like, um, you know, first looking into energy technology and sort of questioning our federal government's policy on it, um, I became like kind of like grossed out, dark, cynical, etc. And very recently, I've become much more. Um, Optimistic. I just read a book. You guys might want to check this out. Actually, this would be a great, great book for. Uh, I'm not done with, done reading it. Uh, check, check this guy out though. Ronald Bailey used to be a um, climate change denier, but he's and he's a. Um, 
he's an economist. He's mainly looking at money. And so, unfortunately, a lot of times, climate change flies in the face of economic development because economic development always sort of means biggering, biggering, fastering. And if you start to look at efficiency, um, that sort of squashes the model where we just sort of keep plowing forward and says, hey, maybe we need to spend a little more money right now on insulation. You're going to save it. That means the utility is not... So it becomes pretty complicated. But what Bailey said is like, whoa, maybe we need to look a little more closely at our economics and, you know, what if um, the seas rise and Miami's gone and New York City's gone and San Diego's in trouble? Um, how might that affect the future? So anyway, he kind of did an about face on climate change and said there's still plenty of room for growth, innovation, building, etc. So I, I recommend reading that. So that. That's one little story I had. Also, thinking back to my last weekend as being a um, uh, faculty mentor for both Shauna and Shelley, I, I was I um, was really impressed by how well Shelley pulled the whole thing off. It was a lot of times, you know, just like me, I'm like running around grumbling for the last decade about energy policy, but I realized it's not going to help. I mean, it helps, to, it helps a little bit, but... It's good to vent. Yeah, but unless, <laughs> unless you take the, um, the Buckminster Fuller approach and actually provide a better solution, or, you know, you know, the bad guys are going to keep winning and the good guys are just going to keep complaining. So, anyway, you know, I suggest reading this book. So, what you might do, in, in, in terms of your essay for 214, um, I would put a little bit of good and bad in there with it. You know, don't be like, I hate Microsoft Excel, what the heck, this course is too hard. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you're welcome to say that, but don't end on that note. I think what you, what you want to um, uh, want to emphasize is that you know now with the Microsoft Excel skills and the modeling skills that we that you have um, you're going to be a more uh, valuable employee to somebody who's looking for this, this, this type of skill set. And I, and I really do think that tying the, the money in with the engineering and the physics is is, is key. In fact, um, some of these other financial analysts I'm dealing with recently, um, you know, they, you need a team. I mean, you need a, you need a team of um, people that can pull it all together. And even this, this morning, um, let me see if I've got... Uh, Source Idaho. Yeah, so I went out to this guy's uh, website. Um, he, uh, why, why am I blanking on his name? Charlie? Charles? Um, he's been running his, his solar. Uh, company, mainly solar PVs and solar thermal, in Idaho for uh, 30 years. So, here we go. And he wants to sell it. So if anybody's out there, and, and you can even look at this problem just like in, in, in um, a, a 214 problem. 
he decided that his company right now is worth um, $150,000. And if you look at what he's making in these years, 35K, 34, 55, et cetera, um, you can sort of see what the payback is. Three to five years is a simple payback. Um, so you could also say if I were to go and get a um, get a loan. Oh, this ARRA, this is American Recovery Reinvestment Act. Montana ranked 52nd of all states and provinces on this money. 52nd. Point is, there, there, you know, there, there are <laughs> there's like funny out there. But so this, you know, this is how much he's, you know, he's clearing, doing his own little thing. The other thing that he emphasized is that um, he, he was he was most successful because not only was he, um, you know, a good um, engineer. He didn't, doesn't have an engineering degree, but he was doing the the drawings, the calculations, all this. He was also willing to go out in the field and roll up his sleeves and get it done. Sure. The whole thing. And the other thing he, he mentioned is that he's running into trouble now because the IBEW, the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, is um, out there campaigning, politicizing, and sometimes squashing other big projects that would happen because they, they want in on the game. But what they don't have are a lot of times, like the old school electricians that are trained in the 70s, they, they, don't, they aren't up to date on the new PV. So, what you know, what we, what I, what I think is going to make us most, you know, valuable as renewable energy technologists, especially in the electric, electrical fields, is to have a strong partner uh, in an electrician who can um, do a job oh, with you, partner with you, and not have to own it. So, all right. What else do we need for this uh, learning unit? Thirteen, you said. Yeah, that was kind of confusing. Let's take a look. Assignment or yeah, fault there we go. Let me get So there's something from Sandia, something resource in the Northwest, the bottom of power, transmission. Um, Don't the chump. Click and clack. That's hilarious. Love it. So based on the generation system you selected in, in topic seven, let's just go back to that for a second. Mm. Well, maybe just whatever was in seven. <laughs>
maybe this is the choice. That thing still kind of wigs me out. The grid frequency changes that quickly. That's, yeah. So let's see how this, how, what, how is a choice being built into this? Is that, is that the main confusing part, Joe? Yeah, the, it's just, yeah, yeah, I guess so. Read the following pages. Well, I'm not 100% sure I get, I get the whole thing either. So let's, let's do this. It's not, it's not um, you know, due until week 14, which is two weeks from now. So let me just, um, I'm going to start this off, uh, forum 12, add a new discussion topic, um, uh, questions. For Alan Fraser, all. If you have questions on how to get started on um, this assignment, please post them here. Um, here's how I would proceed. So, I am going to need to make pressure because <laughs> taking a shower out of a little drippy Whatever. So if, if, even if you have a 55 gallon drum and you open it up, it just drips out. There's not enough head, there's not enough pressure uh, out of a little. So it gets to a certain footage, you know, or 
sure we can calculate that. Yeah, That's right. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, it's not enough. You know, because the water tank in my for my house sits several hundred feet up the hill. You know, up up, up jumbo. It, it blasts. I mean, we have great great pressure. So um, I therefore need a way to make uh, water pressure and the easiest way to do so would be to compress air. I would like to do this uh, using a uh, solar This is my own little beef here. So I'm, I'm thinking, like, how could I actually run, you know, run a pump just off the sun and not consume any electricity? Because, you, know, you know, so, um, so in that case, in this case, I need to, I mean, I, I'm thinking I have to have some kind of, um, uh, what's it called, um, storing engine. Uh, that actually, you know, spins something as a Stirling engine moves. Typically, you might take that Stirling engine and put it into a generator that makes electricity. So, what I would need to do would be to um, calculate how long the sun needs to shine at a given intensity to make a certain amount of pressure. And of course, there's efficiencies built in there. So that's how I would approach it. And I would, you know, I would take it. I would take a picture of my house. I would say um, I currently have this much water pressure. You know, I could estimate it. I could see how far up Jumbo is and what the what the pipe diameter is, um, and say, well, you know, how long would the sun have to shine to store pressure in my house? So there's, you know, there's an energy storage problem. That's how I would approach it. But if there's so something, we're making something up. Yeah, but I would, but I would, the way I would do it, I would make it up in a way that it's relevant to me. It's something I can use and take forward. Because I think what he's trying to do here with this with this topic is say, um, you know, you're 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 over there interviewing for Axman, and Axman's like, well, you know, um, got this crazy guy uh, Layton who lives up the rattlesnake, and he wants to go off grid, and he thinks he wants to heat his house with biomass. How much wood, you know, how much wood is he gonna have to burn to store that heat? H how much water is he gonna need under his house to, you know? You know, so once the fire goes out, he's now got heat sitting under his house in a water bath, and then he's going to slowly drain that heat overnight. So I would look at it as a heat storage problem. Um, and so maybe you've got this. Maybe you've got the same issues. Like, well, shoot, I know that my the sun goes down at six, but my party doesn't end until ten. How you know how many batteries do I need to do that? And then I think what he wants to wants to do here is have a, um, a picture with it. So and I, did, I did something pretty similar not too long ago. Um, I'll show you guys something I did for my own professional engineering <clears throat> career. Put together a um, set of drawings. So, you know, I want to put a webcam in it at Brennan's Wave. So, there's a shot, you know, pretty simple. I need to get power and signal to one. Um, there's already power here, there's already power here. What's the easiest way to get there? I need to get my signal somewhere. I already know I've got signal back here at four. So that's kind of my problem statement. There's a shot of the wave, there's a shot of where I'm going to get to. You know, so you could, you know, something like this is perfectly valid as a, as a as a way to answer this homework problem. There's my alternative solution. So I'm going to evaluate these two. Is, is it closer? Is it farther? More concrete? Oh, whoops! They're not even going that direction. So that's off the table. And then I've got to get Wi-Fi over to the Wilma. Um, so I need to put in. Uh, you know, this, this power line, you know, in this case it's electric, maybe you've got something 
similar, like, shoot, I've got to pump water over here, or air, or heat, or, or some other kind of energy. And that's the nice thing about 214. In energy storage and distribution, you know, we've stored electricity, we've stored, stored water, um, we've stored pressure in, in air tanks, so just think of it as an integrated solution. You know, maybe you've got a wind turbine somewhere. I actually have a spring about 100 yards kind of east. And water spring. Yeah. yeah and it's, it runs year round, and if I could get some sort of uh, CFM out of that, mm -hmm. could set up a turbine. Micro turbine, micro hydro. Get some electricity. Okay. Yeah, so, and really the, the point here is not busy work. What the point here is like, guys, this, you know, this is the last few weeks of your last semester of your degree. This is where you can sort of, you know, launch into, into your own little project. And then, and it becomes a bid. You know, it becomes a bid for a proposal, and, and somebody likes the way that looks, and, and you win the bid. And they, you know, they pay for it, and you show that it, you know, has um, economic benefit over time, too. So, so really, it's, 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 this is the opportunity to launch out into your own. You know, there were my uh, prices for it, a few drawings, nothing too crazy. You don't have to be a CAD expert to do that. I just did it all in uh, PowerPoint. Same thing here. So that's how I would treat it, you know, just something that you're doing anyway. Okay. Yeah. Woo, hour. <laughs>